got loads of website stuff to get done today for my commercial drone business which hopefully will be going live in the next week or two so this is probably a good time to do another EV news roundup yeah that's that's a good idea I can I can do that whilst I'm driving my son to preschool so brilliant kill two birds with one stone the only thing is I'm going to use the GoPro in the car to record the the video so I, I don't know what the sounds gonna turn out like hopefully it'll be good but if it isn't or if the video is a bit dodgy sorry okay so Time for some EV News Roundup! Yay! Righty, so what's been going on in the world of EVs over the last week to ten days? Well, the first thing that springs to mind is Tesla, according to their Q1 results, have delivered 2,500 power walls. It's nice to see them ramping up their their power wall production. Presumably those batteries come from the Gigafactory. Though not necessarily, I actually don't know that for sure. Oh, and sticking with power distribution, Nissan is unveiled its version of the power wall. This you know this is starting to become a bit of a, a common theme. Car manufacturers revealing you know versions of the power wall it's obviously they obviously think it's the way to go I'm not a hundred percent sure why everybody thinks it's such a great idea but they do so maybe it's to sort of insulate against the risk of having too many batteries and not enough cars maybe and sticking with the Nissan Nissan has announced that it's going to be taking a 34% stake in Mitsubishi so well, that's good. Mitsubishi is currently in the middle of its own emissions scandal and hopefully I guess they sort of hope that Nissan can add something into the mix that will, will help them out on that front. Possibly some EV drivetrains, something along those lines maybe, Slightly, slight change of focus. Anyway, the right things are going. Carlos Ghosn is going to wind up running every automaker except a few German ones and Tesla. So at least he's uh, pro EV, so maybe that's not such a bad thing. Apparently radically more advanced batteries are probably not around the corner. Well that's not a massive surprise to me. Uh, as far as I as far as I'm aware, you know, the most likely situation for batteries is that they are going to just slowly get better small incremental improvements in the chemistry with the occasional slightly larger jump but I'm not expecting somebody to just suddenly find something that's a miracle breakthrough I mean people find these breakthroughs all the time the problem is they can't actually turn them into production versions of the battery that can be produced as a sort of eco economical uh, rate and price and that really is the problem isn't it you know these sort of nanoscale battery breakthroughs are brilliant and everything and you know some of them are amazingly efficient and capable designs the problem is you have to make them in a lab and it takes you a couple of months to make a watt hour of battery probably not even that much so yeah this is sort of good news. Five people have survived a horrific crash in the US in a Tesla Model S. That, I mean, I, I don't really think that's particularly big news because as I understand it, and it certainly seems to be borne out generally, that you know, the Model S is one of the safest cars you can be in, uh, which is, you know, I think excellent obviously. Great for people driving their small child around. The LAPD is trialling uh, 
Tesla Model S P85Ds in the pursuit car role. They've had them for a few months now, I believe, and initially sort of they were just sort of seeing how they could sort of fit into the the mix of vehicles, but they didn't actually uh, they weren't actually used for for car chases. But now they're going to give it a go, so that'll be an interesting one. Certainly, I think in a lot of ways, a P85D is a fantastic car for a pursuit. It, it accelerates extremely quickly, and it's nice and heavy, so if you do need to sort of bash something off the road, the, the chances are you're going to be all right. The problem, though, I guess, is the repair costs. Uh, they could be a bit crippling, so, you know, the LAPD might want to think about that before they start trying to push people off the road in them. And Tesla has recently crashed itself. This is the news that a Tesla driver in the US got out of his car, showed his friends a few bits and bobs, went off into a nearby office and came out to find his car had driven forwards into a uh, parked trailer at the side of the road. Now, theories abound as to what happened there. The Tesla, Tesla Motors says the logs of the car indicate that it was put in summon mode and the driver was clearly not sufficiently attentive to the vehicle's surroundings. The trailer was high, so it, it didn't get, it didn't set off the uh, the sensors that are supposed to bring it to a stop before it hits things. So yeah, I mean, who who knows what the problem was there? I suspect the car didn't just drive itself. Usually, when an autonomous feature is seen to not do what it's supposed to do, it's usually the user's fault. I mean, certainly that's usually the case with drones, which is the the experience that I have such things you know people say oh my god I just this drone just took off and flew off in this you know in this random direction and usually whether they're aware of it or not it's because they're telling it to fly off in that direction and they've just got confused as to which way it, it's pointing in the sky so you know it starts going the wrong way and and then they sort of put in even more control input which makes it go a bit faster which makes them put in even a bit more and you know and there you go so maybe it's a similar thing with this Tesla. And our final piece of news for the day. BMW are copying Mercedes-Benz. At least, that's how I see it. Uh, BMW has just unveiled a new concept car, an autonomous driving concept car called the iNext, which to my eyes looks suspiciously similar to the Mercedes-Benz F015, or whatever it's called. That unbelievably futuristic car that's uh, supposed to drive itself that Mercedes unveiled a little while ago. So yeah, looks like everyone's jumping on the bandwagon of totally unachievably futuristic vehicles. What would be really nice is if Mercedes-Benz and BMW could actually put together a really good electric vehicle with some autonomous driving features and actually sell it to the public. You know, that would be brilliant. Why don't they do that? Hmm. wonder who else has come up with a vehicle like that. Hmm. Anyway. Hope you've all enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. <coughs> and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment in the section below. I always like comments. Feedback is always good. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode of my daily vlog. Bye.
I love doing the EV news. EV news is cool.